Hi everyone. We now move into an absolutely massive, 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 massive topic in development economics, which is the link between trade and development. There is a lot of talk in the world about the benefits of trade and how we can actually foster and promote development, but also major issues with relying on trade for development. We're going to consider all of that in a quite a, well, a longish series of videos. And we're going to start today by just focusing on the benefits of trade. Why do developing countries want to focus on trade as a way of promoting development? Well, let's have a look why. Here are some of the big benefits, and in fact, just stick to these. And the key thing is when you, when you analyse these benefits is to come back to development outcomes. Don't just stick with generic economic arguments, generic benefits of trade. You start with those, but you must finish your analysis points with how that can constitute and lead to development. And that's what I've made sure I've done on all of these four points. And let's start with point number one, a fundamental idea here about why trade is good. And that's because countries can exploit their own comparative advantages. Wherever they have an opportunity cost advantage in producing, specialise in that area and then export the goods that you're able to create or extract. In the case of developing countries, a lot of them are resource rich and have an abundance of natural resources which uh, they can extract from the ground and simply sell onto countries who demand them. And you know what? That's a great thing to do. Why? Because in the last kind of five, ten years, natural resources have been in very high demand. There have been emerging economies growing very quickly. They need such natural resources to actually uh, to support their growth. Countries like China, like Brazil, like Russia, like India, uh, other kind of Asian economies that have been rapidly growing, all need these natural resources. Great. At the same time, their prices have been rising fueled by high demand and also uh, lack of supply. So prices increasing, again, increases the incentives to export these goods and services. Um, and also new resources have been discovered in developing countries, all of which mean that such a, a strategy is worthwhile. Exploit your comparative advantage, uh, increase your exports, and we all know that an increase in exports will lead to an increase in growth, an increase in aggregate demand. And whenever we talk about an increase in growth in an economy, we know the link to development, the link to higher incomes, the link to higher profits for firms, the link to um, a fiscal dividend and how that money can be spent by the government on education, health, infrastructure. So we all understand how growth can be fostered and then we go to our development outcomes. Okay? At the same time, consumers benefit. This is a big point. Consumers can benefit from lower prices. The fact that there are bigger markets out there and more competition is fostered means that prices are going to be squeezed, they're going to be lowered, which is going to benefit consumers. They're going to have greater choice. And remember, choice was a word that was used by Tadaro and Sen in talking about what development actually is, and, and choice in an economic way, uh, in terms of what you can buy, in terms of where you can buy from, in terms of the prices that are available to you. So this is all great for consumers. And by opening up your markets, by opening up your country to other countries around the world, there's a chance for greater political relations to be fostered, to be developed. Uh, and this is another big thing. Um, a good example is with sub-Saharan African countries and countries like China. Developing close trade ties where trade is not restricted in any way, um, often African countries will see further benefits of Chinese trade. Maybe that will be uh, the Chinese finding a way to reduce other um, barriers to trade, whether it's themselves, as in between China and Sub-Saharan African countries, or between Sub-Saharan African countries and other countries, where China speaks to its other trade partners and tells them to reduce the barriers to trade for developing countries in Africa. So there are lots of benefits uh, of trade in improving political relations. Economies of scale benefits, basically uh, increasing output, lowering costs, so that the benefits of lowering costs because your markets are much bigger, because the chance of you producing more is much higher. And then the potential productive efficiency gains as a result of that can be transferred into higher profits. And again, those higher profits may mean that governments collect higher tax revenues, corporation tax revenues, which again can uh, promote development if those revenues are spent on key areas uh, that promote development. And finally, another huge benefit is the potential of an improvement in technology. This can happen in two ways. One, because uh, opening, opening yourself up to trade means that you're importing maybe capital goods. Uh, you can see how other countries are improving their technology and very simply you can copy. You can learn 
from technology happening elsewhere in the world. You can break down kind of goods uh, that are adopting certain technologies, use them, uh, foster them, and improve your technology in your own country as a result of what you've seen elsewhere. One way, we call that technological transfer. Um, but also, you can see it in terms of, if firms are making more profits, they can use those profits to reinvest back into the company. Dynamic efficiency gains. And if they invest in technology, then that's another great way of improving technology. It's a great way of breaking away from dualistic economic structures. Instead of focusing heavily on agriculture for growth, by investing in technology, by improving technology, there is a way to break away from that primary sector dependence and actually go into slightly higher uh, tech-based uh, production. So that might be secondary uh, sector industries instead of primary sector industries. Technology is the driver of that. So this is another huge benefit here, if you can actually find a way to improve your level of technology. So all massive reasons as to why, grow, uh, why trade can be so beneficial for development outcomes in developing countries. I hope that now makes sense. Thanks for watching. See you next time.